Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Radium, and today I have the second episode and the final part of my Glass Cannon Calamity Challenge. Now, this is going to be really good fun, I think. And last time I really enjoyed it, we got all the way up to the Moon Lord and didn't defeat him, so that's a very good place I think we're going to start off with today. Well, at least relatively so. But first of all, we have to do a couple more things, which I will explain more in depth in a moment. I don't know how useful it's going to be, but I farmed out seven of the nine accessories for the, uh, wait, what's it called again? The Heart of the Elements. I think it's going to be a very good accessory still because it has various damage capabilities and regenerative properties. And it doesn't give a whole lot of damage reduction or defense, so I'm going to be allowing it. Now, I may need to bend the rules for this challenge a little bit because, um, quite frankly, Calamity gets so hard in the end game that I may need to use an armor set. But I might use a mod that removes my defense, or at least the vast majority of it, if that makes sense. Okay, here we go. I found Analysa, and this is the first boss we're going to be doing. Quite frankly, because I know I can decimate the boss at this kind of power level, so yeah, the Leviathan's pretty much going to present me no challenge at all. And I did a DPS test, by the way. Um, the Tsunami is still by far my best weapon, which is kind of confusing, but I'm not complaining because it's still absolutely amazing and really fun to use. Now, I guess we should just take out Analysa as we are now, because, you know, it's just annoying. And, I mean, there we go, we're pretty much there. I could have almost done this fight on, um, what's it called? Uh, Armageddon, because ooh, I don't even think I got hit once during that battle, but it's good to be safe, and hopefully we get the Leviathan Ambergris, I believe it's called. Oh, I think we finally got it, there we go, the Pearl of Enthrallment. Now, we only need one more item, and this one's slightly harder to get, but, you know, I think I'll still just about manage if I'm lucky. Yes, there we go. Okay, that was actually quite simple. It only took a couple tries and we managed to do it, although we didn't get the bloody item first try, unfortunately. So it looks like we're going to be doing this fight for a little bit. Oh my lord, we finally got the bloomstone, yes. Oh my god, that's ridiculous. That took about a hundred Plaguebringer fights. That's, that's unreal. Um, <laughs> I have no idea why it's so rare now. They may have buffed the drop chance. But I've been here for about half an hour farming treasure bags for that bloomstone. But now at least we can craft the Heart of the Elements, which is definitely something interesting. Um, I don't actually know whether I'll be running it now or not, because, you know, this is pretty good. But at the same time, all I need is damage right now, so I might just keep it as a spare accessory. Uh, that'll equip slightly later on. Yes! Oh my god, yes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have achieved Armageddon Moonlord. Don't question why I did that, but that means no hit, we get six treasure bags. And, oh my lord, so much stuff has just been unlocked. Okay. Um, I don't know what I got that's going to be good. The utensil poker might be alright, and holy Jesus. Okay, well, this is where the game starts to be broken, I think, and oh my god. Wait. We got an SDMG, and it, it, it seems okay, judging by the fire, right? <laughs> Uh, I guess we should see how it's doing in terms of DPS, and holy crap, it's not even as good as the Tsunami still. Nothing compares to it right now, which is kind of crazy. Maybe even the Celebration would be quite good with this, but I just really couldn't tell you. Overall, however, that's pretty cool. The Celestial Onion gives us an extra accessory slot that I'll be slipping the Heart of the Elements right into. I know it gives us 16 defense, but I'm going to have to change the rules later on anyways. Just because, you know... Late game calamity is going to require some armor, I think, regardless of how good you are. This is crazy, but the utensil poker is actually really, really good, achieving like 35,000 DPS, whereas the tsunami is quite lackluster at about 15k. So, hmm. 
Oh, never mind. It goes like 21,000, but the utensil poker is still better. So I'm going to have to figure that out. Maybe go for like a rogue build potentially. Because as said, I will be allowing myself to use some armor. As long as um, I prioritize damage over defense, I'm going to be keeping 300 HP to balance this out. Okay, so let's start off by making the entire Vortex set, which is going to be my first full armor of the entire game. And hmm, let's also make myself infinite Luminite arrows and bullets, I guess. That seems like a pretty smart investment to me. So after we have achieved these, there we go, Vortex armor, here we go. And I want to make the Vortex booster, but at the same time I feel like I need to go for a better pair of wings. Because I know for a fact that Stardust are so, so good in comparison to other things. If I make some Meld Construct, I think I can make some very good stuff. Such as the Empyrean armor, which is a rogue set that I might honestly use. So I can have Vortex and Rogue as different options. I don't really have any rogue like accessories or whatnot. But I feel like I'll be okay just sliding into the class, and there we go, boom. The Empyrean armor looks awesome by the way, very cool. It doesn't suit the wings too much, but again, that's alright, it doesn't matter too much. And yeah, now I just need to figure a couple of things out and then we're good to go. The first thing I want to do is give Dragon Folly a go. This is a difficult battle, a very difficult fight in fact, but at the same time it's just what I want to do. And with the Lunar Kunais we should be able to decimate the boss pretty quickly if I'm correct. And yeah, this is doing really well. Maybe using the Utensil Poker is also a good idea. Um, yeah, the Utensil Poker is honestly very good now, but... Uh, I d again, don't know how versatile it's going to be for me. Um, I'm not that good at this fight, if I'm being completely honest, so I am kind of nervous in that regard. It might take me a couple tries, but hopefully we can get it down quickly enough. Oh my god, we did it. Oh no. That fight was so difficult. What? Um, I have no idea why Dragon Folly was so difficult. Oh no. Uh, at least we got some alright stuff, I think. The Guild of Fabrosis. Wait. Proboscis, sorry, is a weird weapon. The Golden Eagle is absolutely amazing, so I'm excited to get that with Luminite Bullets, potentially. Um, we didn't get much else, but Red Lightning Container is always nice. The Folly Feeds is a cool mount, at least. And yeah, that's not bad overall. Okay guys, fun fact, we could actually fight Yorin now, and we could probably beat his first phase. If I really, really tried. So I might honestly do that just for the meme. You never know if I could do it, and it'll be very sick if I could.
Holy crap, no way. <laughs> I beat Yaren pre-providence and have a treasure bag now. Oh my god. Okay then, we even got the best weapon, the Infernal Spear. Oh my god. I don't know how much I'm going to use this, because I know for a fact this is going to be beyond broken. But I actually did Yorin, and... Oh my god, okay, well, it's not actually even that OP, like, it's amazing, but this only does, like, 30k damage. This does, like, 200, like, 110k, so this is about as strong as Devourer of God's weapons in comparison. That's pretty amazing, <laughs> and you bet your top dollar I'm using this for as long as I please, because that took so, so long. Okay, first proper boss now, let's do the Profane Guardian, gonna drink a day potion. And yeah, let's just give these a go, and wow, okay, well, I think this is pretty self-explanatory for what we're going to be experiencing for a little bit. Obviously, this is going to be very, very overpowered, and I do acknowledge that, but then again, I was the one who no-hit you, or almost no-hit Yorin for the sake of, you know, a little challenge video, so I'll take that one, thank you very much. Okay, here's how the fight should have gone, I think. Okay, so, yeah, this is, this is a tiny bit simpler, <laughs> um... Wow. <laughs> oh god, I love having the Infernal Spear this early. It's honestly such a good weapon. And you really don't get to appreciate weapons like this as they're overshadowed by, well, yeah, yeah, overshadowed by a lot of the Auric Tesla weapons. So I'm happy I finally get to use this thing for what it is. Even though I do have post Yoran gear, it doesn't mean this stuff's going to be useless. A lot of stuff from this might honestly help. And especially stuff like accessories are going to be mandatory pretty much. The next fight I'm doing is the Ceaseless Void. I believe I have my Rune of Cause on me, but we're not quite deep enough yet. So I'm just going to have to go down here as far as possible. And then we can give this boy a go. This is honestly quite a difficult fight, but with the Infernal Spear, we should just be able to go to the surface and be alright. So let's just see. Also, somehow I need to try not to kill the Lunatic Cultist during this. I guess we should just run away, but I reckon he is going to die and activate the Celestial Events. So annoying, but yeah, it's easy enough to deal with. And yeah, the Ceaseless Void is a very, very easy fight now. It normally is anyways, but with any weapon with basic pierce it can be defeated in a matter of moments, but especially considering I'm using almost like Supreme Calamitous equipment this early on, so, you know, swings and roundabouts. Yep, well the fight's almost over already and it's been a matter of seconds, and there we go, boom, easy. We even got a Mirror Blade, which is a really cool weapon. I honestly love this sword and it's so quick it has no animation anymore. But, you know, pretty cool weapon overall, and now it's time for Cygnus. This is another really difficult fight, but at the same time, with our insane DPS, I think we're going to find it easy enough. And where is he? There he is. Yep. Oh my god, yeah, Cygnus. Cygnus suffers a lot here, just because of our sheer damage output is unreal. And there we go, he nearly killed us actually at the end, but we just about did it. And, you know, we've got a Cosmolamp, which is a really nice summon weapon I'm going to be using just because, you know, it's nice to have a spare slot available. Alright, well, I guess there's no time like the present than doing the Devourer of Gods, right? Uh, I know what I'm doing, I've played Calamity before, so, you know, <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Um, there we go. And, wow, okay, well, this is slightly easier than I recall. Jesus. Uh, it even decimates these guys in a matter of moments, and yeah, this is slightly beyond overpowered, if I'm being completely honest. But I did work for this, so, you know, not too unfair, I guess. Well then, first try Devourer of Gods, you love to see it. Um, uh, I, I really don't know how to react because this is just ridiculous at this stage, but it is really fun to do. Start for the Mechworm as well, that's a brilliant upgrade to have. The Nebulius Core is really good, oh wait, Nebula, sorry. 
Uh, I don't need the Cosmo Lamp anymore, and overall this is just going incredibly. Oh, by the way, I forgot to bump up my attack speed, so I'm just going to increase it to eight point two because I can't count, but I've done at least four bosses. So we are really beginning to reach our peak in terms of damage. Additionally, I think it's time for us to do um, an infamous boss. We're going to do the old Duke, and as well as that, I will be doing Poltergeist afterwards. I find the old Duke easier than Poltergeist now, even though they're both ridiculously hard. And yeah, I'm not really good at either of these fights if I'm being completely honest, so... Let's just attempt to not die as quickly as possible, and just pray that the boss dies before we do. As that's all I'm really capable of, honestly, with this fight. Yes, oh lord, that was another close one. But at the same time, it's okay. Uh, I don't know whether we're going to get anything useful and we got a magic weapon. Uh, magic weapons, unfortunately, never work in this game, which is dumb, but... Again, that's okay. Uh, we got the Skip's Blood, at least, which is a really nice die. Which I'll definitely be using for a little bit. And now it's time for some upgrades. Well, that was easier than I thought it would be, Jesus. Okay, then, well, looks like we're done with Poltergast as well, which is crazy. And, wow, that was <laughs> definitely something. First up, we have the Pumpkin Moon, just because I'm slightly more comfortable with this. And, wow, okay, well, this absolutely obliterates everything. Um, not that I wasn't expecting that to happen, but I'm going to turn on and off Ultimate Battler, just to get as many kills as possible. It's going to be very lucky, but it doesn't matter too much. The only thing I need is some Nightmare Fuel and then we can make some more progression. Alright, that should suffice for the time being, now it's time for the Frost Moon. Um, this event is equally easy, but with the ranged troops it is slightly more difficult to manage. The only real goal is to get up to some basic enemies, and I am sorry for the lag, but I quite literally just need to do this for a minute and then I can leave. And then we can focus on getting a much better armor set and then Yorin. Right, there we go, that'll be enough Ender Thermic Energy for now, so let's just turn it today, end this terrible event. And now we're good to go, because we have so much of each material. Now the only worry is whether I have enough Cosmolite to make the full set, which I don't think I do. But luckily with the, um, what's her name? The, whatever this NPC is called. Uh, we can buy treasure bags, so I can just go to modded treasure bags one, and yeah, there we go. The Bower of God's treasure bag. We can get one of them, and that'll net me more than enough Cosmolite than I need. Okay, now it's time to make Dreadon's Forge. This is used for crafting pretty much anything near the end of the game. And really some amazing weapons, that's all there really is to it, so... Uh, there's like, the Hyperthermia, the Executioner's Blade is amazing, but I don't really want it. Um, the only thing I'm really interested in is maybe the Penumbra, and I don't even need it, because, you know, we're just good as is. So, I'm just going to make the God Slayer Armor, which is a very good armor set. And let me figure out where I make that quickly. Okay, here we go, I think I have enough now. We need to make sure we make the right one, and I'm making the Rogue for this. Um, however, I need one more Ascendant Spirit Flame quickly, which is this thing, combined with Phantoplasm, Nightmare Fuel, and Endothermic Energy. That's all you need, and now I can make the God Slayer Chestplate as well. And this is a massive armor upgrade. We go from 91 defense to 125, which is amazing. But there is... there. Are, I should say there are two more items I want to get quickly to show you guys. Okay, guys, now there's only one thing I really need to do, which is um, this, starting the Solar Eclipse. Looking for a single Mothron, I'm picking up some Dark Sun Fragments. So, this will allow me to fight the next stage of Yaren, and he'll go into his second phase rather than the Infernal Catharsis phase, or phase 1 obviously. 
And then once we defeat him, we'll be able to fight Supreme Calamitous, which is really interesting. Oh yes, we did it. Okay, well then, that was something to say the least. Um, one of the things didn't spawn in, you know, the, um, what are they called? The, like, tornadoes at either side of the arena? They didn't spawn in, so I didn't know the boundaries. Which means I was fighting an enraged Yorin for about two and a half minutes, and I won. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> oh my god, that's honestly insane. That's a very good achievement for me, at least. I'll take that one. But yeah, I honestly don't know what to think there, because now we're on to the finale of the game. Supreme Calamitous. And now, I've decided for the finale, I'm just going to bump my speed up to a ten times. Because I think I did miss out a couple of bosses and events, like the Sentinels of the Scourge anyways. I think it's perfectly fair. In all honesty, I don't think anyone, including myself, wants to see um, a farming montage for Auric Tesla. And all the resources, so I've done you guys a favour, boom. This took about 45 minutes to get some of the miscellaneous items, but we have them all now. And here we go, Auric Tesla Body Armor, Auric Tesla Helm, Auric Tesla Greaves, I guess, and the Celestis, which is my chosen weapon for this fight. And I think, it, well, it doesn't take a genius to fathom why I'm using this thing, really. So yeah, that's my main weapon, and obviously the Eye of Extinction. This is going to still be a little bit difficult, actually, because I still only have 300 max life, technically. But I guess let's find a good spot to summon the boss, and let's do it.
Yes, there we go. Oh my god, that took so much concentration. You guys don't understand. In that fight, you take one hit and, like, you can take two hits. That's the closest I'll ever do to a Supreme Calamitous no hit, I think, because I absolutely hate the idea of doing one. Um, because I know I took a good few hits in that fight, but you just literally can't take many. Huh? Well, that shouldn't be displaying. <laughs> but, you know, I didn't die once during the Supreme Calamitous. Yeah, it's all good. And, wow, the red sun's looking as OP as ever. Doesn't actually look that much more OP than usual anyways. But, overall, that's the challenge complete. I'm not going to do Terminus for this challenge, just because I feel like you can all understand what it's going to be. But I had an absolute blast making this, so thank you all so much for the support as well. Recently, the channel's just been absolutely exploding, and I have noticed that. Although I was preparing for my 2K special, we're actually about to hit 5,000 subscribers. So, <laughs> that's absolutely insane. So, all I have to say is thank you so much for helping the channel be what it is today. And motivating me to continue doing really difficult challenges like this one. But until next time, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.